And we're back with another Healthy Dose podcast. I'm Dr. Joe Gabardella and Dr. Buzz Korth. We're your Healthy Dose hosts. Um, check us out at apmrmiami.com and buckeyepmr.com. We're here today with Mark Kazanis from uh, at Mark Method Fitness is where you can check him out on Instagram. Uh, he's got over 17,000 followers. He's only 26 years old. Uh, you got definitely got to check out his website, macmtdfitness.com. Mark is uh, near and dear to our hearts because he interned with us uh, over when you were at FIU a couple of years ago. Correct. Welcome, years Mark. Back. Thank you. Thank Welcome you. back. But you know the reason we have you on it's a, it's a it's a great story. People need to hear about it. Um, you know you've been you've been in practice I would say four years as a trainer now. Um, you've helped and changed hundreds of lives with diet, exercise, Correct. counseling, nutrition. Really, always educating on proper form, proper technique, doing things the right way. And the reason we had you on today is because even doing those things, you developed a serious injury that pretty much took yes. everything away from you. Unfortunately, yes. So, so talk to us about that. You know, like you know, before you even came to see us, what happened? Uh, well, it's it's a, this shoulder has a long history. Um, about six years back, I had my first labrum tear. I actually went in for a slap tear procedure. Um, they corrected it. I would say. Maybe a month, a month later, I went back to the gym. They told me to wait three to four months, so I ended up re-tearing it. I had a second surgery for the same injury about eight months later, um, and then I was good for about three and a half years. Next thing I know, I wake up. It's kind of bothering me again, so I'm thinking I re-injured it. Um, I probably went another year or so without, you know, addressing it, getting an MRI done, seeking any, you know, your help, professional help. And I just kind of pushed through it until finally about five months back, I went and got an MRI through you guys. When I finally got the MRI, I found out it was something pretty serious. You told me it was a full thickness tear. Um, so then from there, we, you know, you gave me the option of, of stem cell. You explained to yeah. me how it worked. You explained to me, you know, uh, people have had great results with it already. So I said, why not? You know, I, it's, I have nothing else to lose at this point. So I went for it. And I think we started in November was mm -hmm. our first time doing it. Um, and now it's, I want to say, what, three months in? Yeah. Th three months? Yeah, November, December, January, almost four months. And I would say I'm little almost, I would say at 90% of being healed. You know, I'm doing things that I wasn't doing last year. I'm finally able to, you know, lift above my head. Uh, Strength-wise, I'm twice as strong as I was four months, you know, prior to this, getting the stem cell. And it's just amazing for somebody in my line of work to see that this can actually heal somebody and give them that quality of life that you think, oh, I need surgery, or that there's no there's no cure for. Yeah, it's Buzz, amazing. even even taking it a step back, this is one of the things that you always talk about is there is no such thing as a normal symptom. Pain is always an indicator that there's something wrong. And Mark, you know, as an athlete, Buzz, you see it all the time. This is what really takes people from maybe PT and simple correction into these more advanced procedures. Talk about that for a second, Buzz, the, the urgency, the necessity of not overlooking symptoms. There is no such thing as normal pain. Yeah, pain's there to tell you something's wrong. I always tell people, if you have pain anywhere for more than a couple weeks, it's not going to get better on its own. Now, if you stub your toe or something, obviously it's going to heal up. But but in a situation like this, he had pains for months at a time. This is what he did for a living. That condition would have only got worse with time. So, you know, he did the right thing, got good professional help. And, and we see these people every day in the office. But, you know, but what you also got to realize is the longer you wait to fix it, the harder it's going to be to fix. Mm -hmm. So really, I tell people, if you, you know, when they first get injured, if I see someone at the gym, hey, man, you know, ice it, uh, you know, stretch it out, see how it goes. If it's still hurting you in a couple of weeks, then come see me. Yeah, that, that, it, makes, it makes the most sense. Um, you're lucky in the sense, Mark, that you had two surgeries and were still able to have such an amazing recovery. It's because of your age. And, yeah. You know, you're yeah. only, you're only uh, 26 years old. You saw all these people coming in. You were actually treating them here in the office. Yes. You interned yes. with us. You were, a, you were a PT intern, athletic trainer intern. Uh, and you were helping people with necks and shoulders and lower backs, let alone did you think you'd be one? Nope, I did not. But, you know, you, you sometimes you, you tell people to do certain things. You don't practice it yourself. You know, and I guess uh, living this lifestyle, you think it's not going to happen to you. You think you're invincible. It's when people check you out on your on your website and on your Instagram, and they, they see this person, it's you're you're like Mr. Miami. This is Everyone <laughs> wants to really look like you, have that you. fit look. And when you get into shape, this is one of the mindset things that kind of catches you at times is when you're in the best shape of your life, you don't want to stop. No, you know, it's, it's another thing don't. that kind of perpetuates Correct. the injury, right? You don't want to go backwards. And, and, you know, it's 
a lot of people don't know, but somebody may look their best, but it doesn't mean they're feeling their best, which is what I went through for a while. That's kind of why I postponed this for a while. When it's your business, you know, I, I'm pushing through the pain because it's my business. It's what I do for a living. Mm -hmm. And you can't, you can't be an athletic trainer coaching people on how to lift with proper form and, you know, have your arm in a sling or you can't even lift Correct. it up on your side. You got to lead by example. Correct. Yeah. Yes. Shoulder surgery is pretty tough. I mean, with, with your, your past labral tear, how long were you in the sling or how long were you not able to work out? I was in the sling about three to four months. And then I would say I wasn't back to lifting, you know, at the, at the same intensity for almost a year. Yeah, so that's that's one of the reasons why yeah. you, you you would be hesitant to even have it. So so you came in, you know, we did some examining uh, some examination of the shoulder. We found out that you had decreased range of motion, pretty much in flexion, Big time. external rotation, internal rotation. The, the the difficulty that you had was primarily with what exercises? Uh, lateral raises, I would say, anything that involved the anterior delt, so a front raise, a push up, a overhead press, uh, dips, you know, just anything with anything going in front of me was pretty much a no-go. Outside of the gym, trouble sleeping? Um, yeah, I driving. would actually driving and then simple as turning the key when I would open the door, when I would rotate, you know, when I would rotate externally, when I would supinate my palm, I would feel it in my shoulder. That's mm -hmm. when I knew it, was, it had to be bad. Mm -hmm. So you know what I was gonna do, Buzz? I was actually gonna read the MRI. We, we talk about it often that we're only as good as our diagnostics. So really having uh, you know, the best facilities around getting the proper diagnosis means that we can dispense the best treatment. But this is what Mark's MRI said. He said he had a downsloping type 2 acromion with impingement of the supraspinatus tendon. Um, he had a full thickness tear within the supraspinatus tendon with subacromial bursitis um, at the distal portion of the tendon. There were some changes um, that involved uh, cystic changes of the humeral head laterally. Um, there was uh, enlargement of the AC joint. So in other words, you know, this is all consistent with the type of injury that you had. If you get to be Buzz's age and my age, when you're closer to 50, most people are gonna have some issue with the labrum if they've, if they've worked out, if they picked up kids. But wear and tear. Wear and tear. But, but when it's slow progressive wear and tear, uh, it doesn't typically come with the severe amount of pain that you had. But when you have a tear of the tendon, I think it's really important to describe what a full thickness tear is. We, we went through that, if you remember back in the office, you can have a partial thickness tear or a full thickness tear of a tendon. If there is not disruption of the tendon with retraction, most likely it could be treated non-surgically. So, you know, if you're gonna imagine, um, you know, cutting into a piece of steak, mm -hmm. if you take your knife and cut through it halfway, that's called a partial thickness tear. If you, if you take your knife and pierce the steak top to bottom, but don't cool. cut it left to right, that's a full thickness tear without retraction. And that's what you had. Mm -hmm. So when, when we reviewed this with the radiologist, he said, you know what, the best way to go, because you were so young, you had the history of the surgery and you wanted to stay active, was to really to get your body to heal again. And we, we went through the, the basically the, uh, the P and the P uh, buzz, you know, we did the PRP, we did the prolo, uh, and we did the tissue graft that contains the Wharton's jelly. So why don't you start out Buzz, you know, he, he has the best ex explanations for this. Really great analogies. Start out, number one, with the age, Buzz, why we elected to put in PRP, um, how the, you know, the prolozone and, and, then, and then the cells, why it works so well with Mark. Yeah, great question. So, you know, PRP, which is platelet-rich plasma, which we both use at our facilities, is the patient comes in, uh, we draw the blood out of, out of the patient, their own patient's blood, and we spin it down and we get grab what we call the platelet-rich plasma. And the best way to, I think, to analogize this is it's, it's basically food for the person's cells and, and food for his own stem cells. Uh, PRP is very effective, in my opinion, people that are 35 and below. Once you get above 35 years of age, uh, you know, unless you're a diabetic or something, the PRP does become a lot less effective. You know, and, and I'll see physicians doing PRP in 70 and 80 year old people. It doesn't make a lot of sense because, number one, the persons don't have any stem cells to feed. And number two, the quality of that PRP, and, and I know you can attest this, Joe, you'll just get less PRP, mm -hmm. right? The same thing if you have someone who's diabetic or smoker, the PRP is just not good. So um, that, was a, that was a good choice for him. Uh, but obviously, his tear must have been really significant. Uh, you went with the, with the tissue allograft, which is from uh, basically we get it from umbilical cords. Uh, females that have full section birth, full term births. And what they do is they take the Wharton's jelly, which is the center of that umbilical cord, and we can put it in a, uh, to a person's joint or into a muscle tear like this. And what happens with that is that, that, that tissue is loaded with stem cells, loaded with exosomes, cytokines, structural proteins, and that cushioning and structural support that it provides with all those extra things 
propagate the body to heal itself. You know, and basically you're just supercharging as healing because once you're through puberty, these things don't heal on their own in general and it, it, the joints, the tendons, the ligaments. So, you know, if you have a, a, a kid in puberty, PRP by itself works fine, but you know, he's past puberty is, are you past puberty over there? <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> okay. Yeah. It, they just don't heal well. And it, he would end up with a full thickness tear with retraction. If he would have continued on, it was just not, not if it's when, so what you did by putting that in there is just you got his body to to wake up and actually heal itself, and I expect that this time it's almost 100. percent Yeah, it is. I would I would say it's there's certain things that I still haven't tested, but I would say uh, definitely 90 percent at most, and that's that I haven't pushed myself to doing you know the weight I was doing six or seven months ago, but I'm definitely able to do full range of motion on my overhead press. I'm able to do lateral raises again. Um, I couldn't do any of those things without severe pain, even if it was just a motion with no weight. You know, now I'm back to doing it with weight and no pain at all. So I think the, the, uh, the final test would be, you know, going back to lifting what I was lifting prior, you know, as far as certain presses and stuff like that uh, with no pain. So 90% more or less. One of the other beauties of these type of procedures, you know, like the, the stem cell procedures that Dr. Joe's doing down there is – really post there's no post surgery really i mean you don't have to your arms on a sling the procedure itself really is not uncomfortable and your body's going to tell you what you can and can't do so if mm -hmm. you don't have pain go for it you know yes. patients ask well what you know what, what are the what are the you know after you get the procedure done what do i have to do well, i always say for the first two weeks we want you to you know pretend you had surgery even though it's not going to feel like it but then after that if it doesn't hurt go for it if it hurts don't do it your body will tell you what you can and can't do correct, correct. you know and we, and we also don't know the outcome. You know, I always tell people we expect about 10% improvement a month for 10 months. Mm -hmm. After 10 months, that's as, probably as good as you're going to get from that particular procedure. So it's that simple. 10 months. Yeah, and we're only three months in. That's it. So I'm, I'm excited because we're three yeah. months in and I feel this good. Yeah, you're, at, you know, I can't imagine. You're ahead of, you're ahead of schedule, way, <laughs> way ahead of schedule. So how, how has this changed just your overall, you know, your, your, uh, not just your working out, but but life. You know, feeling feeling back oh, to man. yourself. Oh man, put again. it this way: uh, if you live your whole life in pain, constantly in pain, you know, you're gonna be a little cranky here and there. You're gonna be a lot more. You're gonna be very easily irritated by any little thing. So quality of life has definitely increased significantly. Um, I would just be, you know, watching a movie. I would be in the movie theater, and my arm would just start kind of, you know, flaring up, and I would start having all kinds of pain moving my arm around. And that's, you know, it's frustrating. It's yeah. really frustrating. We, we, I remember, Mark, too, as you were going through your recovery, we're about maybe uh, three or four weeks in. Maybe you said, I don't want to say 40, 50, but it was feeling better, but it was still there. It was uncomfortable. Yeah, I remember about week three or week four, you know, I was doing a lot of, you know, people would start Googling and start researching themselves. And you kind of get desperate. You want it to work so bad. And it was saying, like, oh, by week three, you should have no more pain and it'll start working. So week three kicked in. I think it was literally the start of week three. And I was like, man, I still have some kind of pain. I came to you. I was like, I don't even think it's working. I don't know if it's going to work for me. I don't know if we should do another <laughs> shot. End of week four. And I was like, wow, you know, what yeah. What just happened? Yeah. Why is it not clicking? Why is it not popping? Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, and, and I think it was by even some of your urging for having worked here and, you know, been around so many people yourself that you've worked on. You know, you mentioned to me about you know, downsloping of the shoulder, or maybe it looked like, you know, you were having trouble getting it into external rotation. Yes. And we, we really just went back to basics. We took additional x-rays. We looked at the spine, the position of your hips, and we found out that you had some really severe rotation of the hips that affected you all the way up into the shoulders. Yes. Um, I would say there was a lot of compensation, you know, all over the body, trying to kind of avoid any pain or any of those symptoms. So things were thrown off, you know, things were thrown off yep. to avoid pain. And uh, so after doing the x-rays, we did some buzz basic adjusting, you know, adjusted the hips, the middle back, lower back, did some um, kinesiology, trigenics, where we strengthened the supraspinatus tendon, worked all the external rotators, the uh, teres minor, uh, the infraspinatus. And I think that was almost one day to the next that you know. Oh, yeah, instantly. Um, I had some really bad winging of the scapula, and it would come in and out, you know, doing anything. I would be laying on a bench press, and I would notice that my scapula was hurting because it would be poking out at the bench. The same day we did the adjustment, I, it was gone. Yeah. No. I mean, sometimes it's just simple. Yeah. Simple is better, Buzz, right? We, we always learned. Uh, yeah, and there's, and there's, no, there's no cookie cutter. We always keep talking yeah. about that, you know. You know, 
you could have two people come in with the same exact injuries and the treatments are totally different. So mm -hmm. that's one of the advantages, you know, your facility, my facility, you have medical providers, you know, physical therapists, chiropractors, and we all look at it because we, you know, you, the reality is they all bring something to the table. Mm -hmm. We, we learned about one of the first things we had back way back when Buzz Scott so many years ago now was, uh, anatomy and physiology. And uh, the first thing they taught was osteology and then the, and the muscular system. And they teach it in a way, and everyone knows the term is, is the musculoskeletal system. Nobody says the skeletal muscular system. But it really does a disservice because the muscular system is a, is, is a byproduct, only works as well as your foundation. foundation and correct. there's so many amazing people like you, Mark. You, know, you go to your uh, Instagram page, Mac Method Fitness, and you see all these body transformations. But what you don't see is how many people are hurting, Correct. you know, and, and if you would address some pretty simple basics, um, looking at the feet, looking at the knees, looking at the hips, look at the skeletal system first and then build your house, build your frame around that. You'd have people that are able to train longer, get better results. I mean, mm -hmm. even, even as good as you are, people drop out, right? They yes. get hurt. They don't, yes. you don't know why you yes. think it's something you did, but it's really, they're in pain. They don't want to tell anybody. You really don't know. Yeah. They could be in pain and they won't tell you, yep. you know? Yeah. Yeah. True. Simple as you said, I've, I've had clients come in and they tell me, oh, I'm not going to squat because my back starts hurting when I squat. So we can do anything, you know, before we even start, I can do anything but a squat. We do a couple adjustments to the knees, a couple adjustments, you know, how they're placing their feet and instantly they're squatting and they told me they're never going to squat. Mm -hmm. it's as simple as that. Yep. So, yeah, it's, it's an amazing, uh, amazing recovery, Mark. And there's lots more, you know, coming for you like you like. Uh, Buzz said you're you know ten months in to get the full benefit. You're about three three and a half months in. What would you say to people out there that are listening that have shoulder pain, that have knee pain, that have back pain? They're kind of pushing through like you did. Um, is this something you know for everybody? Could, you know it's, uh, about the pricing. Was it affordable for you? All those things. Uh, well, back to what Buzz said. The sooner you catch it, you know, the the easier it is to correct the issue. Um, and then from there, it's kind of like you know, what's the priority for me? I thought health is everything to me. You know, it's the priority. Um, I, I, I'd rather spend the money on this than anything else, you know, and s surgery for me is not an option. It's as it is for many people. It's not an option. People need to live their life and not be in a sling and, you know, be, uh, basically they're, they're going to be very restricted. Mm -hmm. Surgery is very restrictive. It will take away a huge quality of life. And if you're in my fields and any kind of field where you're hands on, it's really not an option. You know, it's, it's going to kind of harm your business. So this is worth every penny and some, you know, I would definitely do it again. And, and you know what you, you got to understand surgery is surgery is risky too Joe you can speak that yourself I, you had an injury that required surgery it was a with you had a, a torn pec with retraction mm -hmm. so that was that was surgical only and uh, you might want to explain your, your situation but a lot of people just think you know insurance will cover my surgery it's not a big deal I mean Joe went to the best surgeon you Joe's healthier than most people at his age and you could have died yeah and that was just last year so I mean there's risk always with surgery. Yeah, you, you hear about, you know, the, the big topic in the news now is coronavirus, you know, that even the healthiest people are, are contracting this. And it, it, any, any virus, any bug, any, any uh, bacteria, mold, yeast, we're, we're host organisms for these things, you know. And, uh, you know, like Buzz said, when I you – know, basic simple injury, right, that you tear a muscle, there's no choice. You have to do surgery. Um, and it got infected and, you know, I had to deal with the consequences. It was a very, very long recovery, something that should have taken, wow. uh, 12 weeks, took more than a year. And, and I'm lucky to be here because, wow. uh, you know, Could those bacterial worse. infections, um, the cellulitis, the complicating factors from doing these, uh, procedures, um, they can be life threatening at times. So, you know, we, we talk about our whole process here, kind of bringing a first circle is, you know, think about surgery as a last option. Yes, Not the first. Definitely. I mean, I, people's frame of mind is um, everything's fixable as soon as there's pain with no work, right? Definitely. You get people that come in and they say, I want to look like you, but, but I don't want to work for it. What, yep. what, you know, they, they don't want to do the training. They don't want to do the diet. And, and I'd attribute what you did, Mark, and Buzz, you could comment on this too, is that, you know, how many people go in there and lift weights year after year after year and their body never changes? Oh, yeah. They, they, they look worse. <laughs> See it all the time. And it's, and it's all the diet. It's, it's yes. all the food that goes into the body that causes the transformation, Correct. just like what you did with your shoulder. Mm -hmm. You know, so I agree. It, I'm sure a big part of your practice, uh, Mark, your gym. T t actually, tell us where your gym is. Uh, well, my gym is actually on 132nd Avenue and Northwest 2nd Street. Okay. So, so what, what do you do there? Do you do personalized, uh, diet, nutrition counseling, so who you work a, with? It's a studio, and basically, you know, I do one-on-one -on -one training. 
Um, it can go up to one on two training. And basically it's just, you know, you're, you're taking people who have never really worked out for the most part and you're just building the foundation, you know, like we were talking about simply just teaching them how to do things the proper way, mm -hmm. um, teaching them how to, you, you want to make it a lifestyle for them. It's, I call it a lifestyle change. It's not, you know, working out. It's basically a lifestyle change. You're teaching them how to eat properly, teaching them how to sustain this lifestyle, you know, with the working out, mm -hmm. nothing extreme, just sustainability is, you know, the priority. So when someone comes in, they could be an experienced lifter and an inexperienced lifter. They can expect, uh, do you have the ability to work with them multiple times a week if yes. they choose? Well, there's an intensity, you know, there's a level, um, and everybody progresses different. So, you know, I'm not going to train somebody who's been an athlete at the same level as somebody who, you know, is a soccer mom and they're just getting in shape. You know, it's, it's priorities. Their priority is health versus an image or versus mm -hmm. a sport or so everybody's going to be on their own regimen. Everybody has their own plan. So if someone's an athlete and they have specific goals of wanting to cut down time on a 40 or they want to lift more, or somebody's a soccer mom and they have goals of wanting to fit into their bikini by the summer, you have a plan for all those people? <laughs> for all of them. Everything is according to the client. You know, it's adjusted, it's personalized for the client. I think one of the best parts about it, I've seen your befores and aftermarks, those transformations, people get... Uh, you know, a lot of people can get, can, can get into the gym, but they may not necessarily know how to do cardio the right way. But the diet is tricky, oh, right, yeah. in bodybuilding. Hardest and you, you take that, make it very easy. Simplify it to a T. You, you know, know, to where it's anybody can follow it. So I take, I, I pretty much dummy proof, you know, what I've gone to school for so long. And I put it, you know, in, into, I, I cut it in half. You know, I basically cut the, the time in half. And, I, and they learned something that I took me four years to learn within a month. Yeah. So yeah. I, you know, that's a, a, a as a segue into you, Buzz. Too, it's you know, you're as a national spokesperson now um, for these uh, for these tissue graphs for regenerative labs. You you take something that we went to school for a long time, spent many 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 hours on, and you and you give very simple explanations. It doesn't mean that the te technology uh, is simple in any way, but you have a, a unique ability to to describe this in ways that people can understand. It's accessible to everyone, right? Yeah, and anyone can afford these procedures. I mean, I think a lot of people think, you know, stem cell therapy is going to be too expensive or it'll be outside of my thing. Anybody can afford afford these procedures at this point. You know, they, you know, there, there's more and more of them getting done. The, the tissue prices have come down, and, and there's no reason not to at least look into it. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and just because your doctor told you you need surgery, the majority of people we do procedures on have been told they need to have surgery, and they actually don't. So, so always come and get a second opinion, you know, go, go to a facility like Dr. Joe's or ours up here in Ohio and see, and if you need surgery, we'll tell you, like there's certain, certain situations that need it, but it, surgery is overdone in my opinion. Yeah. So we're, we're glad uh, we had the opportunity to work together again, Mark. I know we're not done. we got a lot more to go. Uh, before we sign off, I, I'd be remiss to say, uh, Dr. Buzz, want to wish you a very happy birthday. You turned the corner. You, you hit a big milestone. You had a, you had a fun time this past weekend. Oh, yeah, yeah, it was great. Went to the fight. Yep. Uh, oh, no, so it was a good time. Made it back for the show. <laughs> yeah, so. Yeah, made it back. So, so Buzz. this weekend. When, when uh, people are listening to the show, both, uh, you know, uh, patients, um, when we have um, uh, other doctors that want to learn more about the, the products that we use, the, uh, the tissue graphs with the Wharton's Jelly, how do they get in touch with you? Where do they go? Uh, you can go right to my website, which is BuckeyePMR.com. BuckeyePMR.com. Check it out. Okay, great. So, uh, Dr. Buzz, Mark, we're going to be back next week. We're going to be talking about uh, regenerative medicine, uh, bioidentical hormones, all the things that you need to do to stay healthy, get healthy, be fit for summer, and get back to the life that you want, get back in the game. We'll see you next time.